Hey, you're on, baby. This piece is called your greatest aim. It's a piece of granite, and it has a white stripes going through it. Reminisce like arrows going through it, like Cupid's arrow. And the base is California alabaster. And I made a little path. This roughness represents the cruel world. And this path leads up to the top. You're supposed to let love be your greatest aim, so that's basically what this is all about. It's a stand up part. Wow, that's a beautiful angle. Beautiful. And this piece is going for retailing for four thousand dollars. There will be mold, no mold taken off of it. So it's one of a kind. It'll be sold as an original, no copies. Spin it again for me. Hold it there. Okay. What's that sick fat thing lurking in the back with all those veins in it? Jesus. What kind of tool is that? <laughs> Human implement. The sculptor's tool. Nice. Yeah. Not many guys have that tool, huh? Mm. Oh, look at these cuts. What are those cuts Another from? Another note. This stone here is extremely hard. A diamond is a 10 on the most hardness scale. This is about a seven. So wow. this is the diamond of the marble out of all the marble stones. Do you ever get injured? You you ever, what's that on your arm? Oh, that's another cut. This, see? This is extremely sharp. It's extremely hard. Let me see your arm. It's just a couple little cuts. So this sculpture, when it's installed down in Huntington, will be around for centuries. Nice. The reason why the Egyptian sculptures in the museums look like they were just made yesterday is because they were made out of granite. This particular marble, Mayan beige, which is Mexican marble, which is similar to the Italian Botticino marble, is harder than salt and pepper granite. Uh, it doesn't carve like a classical marble. It, it breaks. So. Now, when you're hitting it with the hammer... Can those chunks that are flying off hurt you? Oh, yeah. When I first started using a big chipping hammer on this, a couple big pieces went by my face, and I took this one of the chips, and I wanted to see how sharp they were, so I took it over to this cardboard. I mean, it just Jesus. cuts it rather easily. What would happen if that flew off and hit you in the throat? It'd probably kill me. I'd probably bleed to death right here in front of my sculpture. <laughs> Back to the, the hardness of this stone. If you go to Italy, a lot of the marble sculptures that are outside are deteriorating. That's one of the qualities of white marble. It's not really hard, and it absorbs pollution, and it makes the stone deteriorate. This stone doesn't have pores. It's It's... It's like uh, a very hard granite. So like pepper granite that I told you about is not as hard as like a Texas red granite. Mm -hmm. So this that's another reason why I chose this stone, because it'll be around a long time after we are all gone, even our children. Okay, what's next? Okay, hold on. Maybe we should shoot this big one. Yeah. I'm going to take you back into the artist's cave. You know, if you shoot... What do you got here? Okay, this says California Tough Puffin. You can see the tufts above the eyes. That light's killing me up there. Hang on. Let me shut out. No, it's okay now. These are tufts. The other puffin has horns. So this is a tough puffin. He's got a little anchovy in his mouth. And it's entitled Catch of the Day. 
Where's the anchovy? Right here. There's his head over here and his tail. He's over here. He's coming out of the water. Explain Just, the detail on the eyes and the head again. This is a California tough pup, and these are the tufts up here. The other type, it has little horns. So I chose to depict the uh, the tough puffin. Uh, it has the feathers, and they're they have the wet appearance. You don't see the full detail of them because when they coming out of the water, the the feathers basically blend in, and it's coming out of white Greek marble water and telecon, which the Parthenon was made out of. I'll give it a quick spin here. It has these lines in it. They're not cracks. They're like little um, hairline fissures. It's a very solid piece. How much does it weigh? This weighs about 15 pounds. Hold it there. Wow. Okay. And this particular piece is going for $3,500. One of a kind? One of a kind. Yes. And it's called Catch of the Day. Beautiful. What's and next? these birds okay. are occupy uh, like the northern California region and further north. Cool. What's next? What do you got there? Okay, this piece is called Genesis. It's one of my latest abstracts. So you can see the forward motion. It's something like the concept of manifest destiny. Yeah, the motion down here rolls up, comes to a point, focus point. It's split in the back. And this represents a is a human attribute that some of us have. So the back side is not polished. And that represents like our subconscious lurking in the back. The front is polished to represent the conscious mind. And it's all out of one piece. This is Colorado Yule marble, very dense, hard marble. All the American marbles are very hard. North Carolina blue, Tennessee pink. Uh, this Colorado white is, is pretty hard. It's very beautiful. It's not very consistent, so it's hard to, it's quite hard to detail. And this piece is going for $5,000. How much does it weigh? There's no it probably weighs about 150 pounds. Whoa. <laughs> and it's hollow inside. So if you were to display it and top light it at night with no other lights around it, the light would come out of the sides. Wow. So you could it's hollow in here. Beautiful. And the abstracts sir, this is what you call pure art because it's the artist interpretation of line and form put into imagery like someone writing poetry or something like that. This is poetry in motion, capturing a moment in the sculptor's mind. Cool. What do you got next? 